Hello, and welcome to Mr. C's presentation on adding and subtracting decimals. You got to line up them points. Line up them points, we'll get to that. But first, I want you to ask the question you've been dying to ask me since I started this video nigh 30 seconds ago. Why do I want to even know this? Well, there's a couple good reasons. When adding and subtracting decimals, it can help you with money. Quarters, dimes, nickels, pennies, they're all pieces of a dollar, right? So when you're adding and subtracting them, you're already adding and subtracting decimals. So if you kind of know how to do it, it may help you with some money situations. Secondly, uh, decimals can be converted. You see this word converted? It means changed, okay? Decimals can be changed into fractions and percents. So if you know how to add and subtract decimals, you may know how to add and subtract some fractions and percents already. It can it can help you out a little bit. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's do it. I'm gonna give you three problems and then we're gonna go over some important rules for solving them. First problem, 0.55 or 55 hundredths plus 0.32 or 32 hundredths. Second problem, is gonna be 14.039 or 14 and 39 thousandths minus two and 15 hundredths. And our last problem, 62 hmm. minus four and 72 hundredths. Okay, are you ready for the rule? Are you ready for the most important rule? Look me in the eye. Are you ready? Are you ready? You better be ready, because here it comes. <laughs> You gotta line up the decimal points. You absolutely, absolutely, absolutely have to line them up when you're adding or subtracting decimals. I write them first. What? Yeah, look, I write my decimal points first. And then I fill in my numbers. Five tenths, five hundredths, or 55 hundredths. Three tenths, two hundredths, or 32 hundredths. And then you can add just like any other multiple digit addition, which we already know how to do, right? Five plus two is seven. Five plus three is eight, okay? And then let's not forget to drag down our decimal point at the end. So what's 55 hundredths plus 32 hundredths? Well, 87 hundredths, or eight tenths and seven hundredths, however you wanna look at it, okay? Let's go on to the second problem. We're gonna start out by lining up the decimal points. What, we're gonna do that first every time? That's what I do. Then I go to my tenths place then my hundredths place, then my thousandths place, and then I fill in the ones and the tens, and do the same thing down here, the tenths first, the hundredths second, and then the ones place, and then I can subtract. But what's a, how do, what about, how do, what, how do, what, how do I do that? Are you ready for the second important rule of decimals? It's a wacky one. Wow, 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 wow. When you have a decimal, you can add as many zeros to the end as you want. What? That's right. You can add as many zeros to the end as you want. As many as you'd like. Okay? You see this? See this number out here, you're going, dude, I need there to be a number here so I can subtract. You can't just subtract over nothing, right? I mean, you kind of can, but it's always safe to have a number there. Well, when you're adding or subtracting decimals, keep that place value with a zero. You can put as many as you want. Look, we can even add more zeros. You want to add a zero here and a zero here? We can. Why? Well, because there's decimal points in the number. So you can add as many zeros as you want to the end. You're not changing the number. You're changing how it looks, but you're not changing the size of it, okay? You can still read this 14 and 39 thousandths. If you wanted, you could read it 14 and 390 10 thousandths. It sounds different. It may look a little different, but it's exactly the same size. The number hasn't changed at all. So let's do our subtractions. I'm gonna forget this over here, but let, or whatever, let's do it. Zero minus zero is zero. Nine minus zero, nine. Three minus five, I gotta borrow. Can't borrow from it if it's zero. Could have borrowed from a four, the four becomes a three, this zero becomes a 10, now I can borrow from it. 10 becomes a nine, three becomes a 13. 13 minus five is eight. Nine minus one is eight. Drop down the decimal point, don't forget. If you don't, your answer will be all wrong. 
3 minus 2 is 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. Our answer to 14.039 minus 2.15 is 11 and 889 thousandths. Or 11 and 8 thousand eight hundred and ninety ten thousandths don't get too confused with what i just said there though it is the right answer i usually just ignore the zeros at the end when i'm done and read 11 and 889 thousandths or 11 and eight tenths eight hundredths and nine thousandths same thing okay let's do this last one 62 now you might already be asking yourself there is no decimal point there how do i line it up well there's an invisible decimal point after the ones place in every number. We just don't write it because we don't have to. But when we're adding and subtracting decimals, we need it there. So we need to put it in. So after every ones place, there's a decimal point. Okay, Even if you don't see it in normal numbers, it is there. And then that's going to help us to align or orient our numbers here. So we look, we've got the ones places lined up. And here's a tens place out here. There's no number in the tens place here. And let's acknowledge our wacky rule. All right, we can add zeros to the end of this now that there's a decimal point there. Okay, we haven't added anything to the number. It's still 62 and zero tenths and zero hundredths. Okay, if you don't have any tenths and any hundredths, you haven't made it any bigger. All we did was put some zeros in there to hold a place value for us. And then we do our regular subtraction. What's zero minus two? Can't do it, gotta borrow. Can't borrow from a zero, gotta borrow from the two. Two becomes a one. This zero becomes a 10. Now we can borrow from it. 10 becomes a nine. This zero becomes a 10. 10 minus two is eight. Nine minus seven is two. Drop down your decimal point. One minus four, can't do it, gotta borrow. Six becomes a five. Ugh, it's an ugly five, but trust me, it's a five. Uh, this one becomes an 11. 11 minus 4 is 7, and 5 minus 0 is 5. So the answer to 62 minus 4.72, or 4 and 72 hundredths, is 57 and 28 hundredths, or 57.28. You think you can do this? I'm going to challenge you to in just a moment. But for now, let's go over what we learned. Okay? Um, ah! Ah! Well, it was there for a second. Let's pretend like it's still there. What did we learn? When adding and subtracting decimals, you have to line up the decimal point. You have to, okay? If you don't, your whole number is gonna be wrong. Uh, if there's a decimal point in a number, you can add zeros to the end of it, as many as you'd like. Whatever makes the problem easier to do. So if you have some place values at the end with nothing hovering above them or below them, add some zeros to the end of any number that has a decimal point in it, okay? And... Adding and subtracting decimals can help you with money, can help you with fractions, can help you with percents. Okay? You're going to try it now. Do we have to? Yeah, you got to try it. If you don't practice, you're never going to learn. I got four problems for you here. 45 hundredths plus 34 hundredths. The second one is going to be 56 minus 3 and 2 hundredths, or 3.02, however you want to say it. Uh, the third one is 12.023 minus 4.1. Ooh, you're going to have to follow some rules for that one. And then the last one, this is the biggest one, 34 and 676 thousandths plus 12 and 809 thousandths. Okay, good luck. When you're finished with this, show your grandma, show your teacher, show somebody. Have them check your work. Make sure that you did it right. Good luck moving forward. I hope this helped.